Okay, so this is our finished product. We've got tomato plants, beans, rosemary, um, kale growing out of here. You'll notice I've got one of these white kind of um, aquarium um, filters uh, just to keep the, some of the extra, extra solid waste off. We've got more tomatoes up in the top bed and more kale. Um, and uh, the hoses are all connected now so this is the outlet hose going into the tank and we've obviously got the inlet hoses um, going from pumps like this one this is just a simple kind of uh, pump head uh, where it sucks the water in and pumps the water out and we've got the inlet pumps moving in from the bottom of the fish tank and going up into the grow beds and we've got our bell siphons working perfectly on the surface we've got um, a number of tomato plants seedlings growing away and we'll still soon plant them in the main bed as well as a bit of dill coming up to feed the fish we've got um, pots of duckweed and since these fish like we've got here in the tank which is tilapia and goldfish are vegetarians they'll eat that the duckweed grows really well in the nitrate rich water in this fish tank that's produced by the activity of the bacteria working on the fish waste testing the water again and now things aren't so good um, there was a big ammonia spike um, and um, the ammonia test was really really green it was coming up to four to eight um, and the pH was really acidic as well it was really low it was like six or below so and interestingly enough the nitrates uh, was zero always zero um, so something was good with the nitrates but the bacteria had stopped converting the ammonia and the water was really acidic below six and uh, I was getting really worried about that because uh, with ammonia so high the fish could have been killed uh, because of the toxicity. Now luckily, thanks to a lot of good forums out there, I learned that um, really uh, low pH, high acidic water meant that um, the ammonia didn't become so dangerous because it was converted into its less dangerous form. Uh, but if the pH went uh, increased again, uh, it would become uh, the more dangerous form of ammonia. So uh, what to do? Well, I did a lot of water changes. They didn't seem to help very much. I was completely uh, confused as to what went wrong. And then um, I realized and remembered what I had forgotten to add to the new well, was This uh, oyster shell, or even better, lots and lots of eggshells, broken up eggshells. And the reason why eggshells are so good is number one, they're cheap. They're uh, an easy byproduct to get after you finish your breakfast. Um, all you need to do is peel off that weird internal skin inside the eggshell, and um, there you go. You've got a um, beautiful, easy uh, source of um, higher pH. So, and you may not be able to see it very well, but the eggshells have already gone from their usual yellow color to a more, sorry, usual white color. To a more yellowish color. I'm just going to move the eggshells back into a better position so they're right underneath the, um, the water a little bit more. Um, and um, the acidic water uh, combining with the eggshells is already uh, beginning to lower the pH and as you notice the ammonia levels which were really, um, as I said before, really green, uh, really high ammonia, has backed down a little bit and has almost gone back down to, to normal. So um, there you go. The um, bacteria, um, through the process of uh, doing its job of converting the ammonia to nitrite and then to nitrate, um, as a byproduct, creates a lot of um, hydrogen ions which increase the acidity of the water, and um, that's what caused the acidic water. Um, the acidic water was too high, and uh, basically, the bacteria started to stop doing its job because the water was too acidic. and. Um, uh, we've now uh, remembered our old good old-fashioned cure which is just adding leftover oyster shells and good old eggshells.